Hey everyone, welcome to Singularity Computers, Client Build 16, Part 3. In this part of the build log, I'm mainly going to focus on completing the water cooling loop and filling it. I'm also going to work on the last of the internal case mods and the custom wiring. Now, I noticed people commented on the filming on my last video. I've actually been using a different camera for the last video and part of this one, but I've decided to go back to my old one because out of all of the videos I've ever made, people have only ever had good things to say about my filming. I will definitely be upgrading my camera in the future, but for now, I'm going to continue to do the best I can with what I have. So you can see that I've started on the water cooling loop. So far, I've installed most of the fittings and two lengths of tube. I'm using Bits Power acrylic tube and Bits Power black sparkle fittings and a combination of 12 and 16 millimeter acrylic tube. The reasons I'm combining the two is because, first of all, one of the requests for this build was a lack of symmetry, but this is actually something you'll often see me do in my build. So I like to use the smaller diameter tube, the 12 millimeter, where there is less space, for example, down next to the reservoir here, and then the larger diameter tube, the 16 millimeter, where there is plenty of space. And there's a couple of reasons for this. First of all, aesthetics, it looks less cramped. But the other reason is, if I were to try to install 16 millimeter tube down next to the reservoir, where the components are close together and fixed in position, I would have to put a lot of pressure on the components to actually fit the length of tube into position. And this becomes even more important, for example, on the motherboard area, if you have a lot of water blocks very close together, you don't want to have to put much pressure on your components to be able to fit the tube in between the fittings. So you're often a lot better off using the 12 millimeter tube where there is less space. And you know, you'll almost always see me do this in my builds. I'm now continuing to work on the water cooling loop. And just briefly, you can see my process for getting the acrylic tube lengths, cutting it, putting the camphor on it, bending it, and fitting it into position. So I'm now getting the lengths, and I'm using the silicon inserts, which are for bending the tube, to get the lengths. And you can see I'm fitting them into the exact position I'm going to be routing the tube. That way, I can then lay them down next to a ruler and measure off the exact length. And I'm now cutting the tube to length with a bandsaw, but if you have limited tools, I recommend a junior hacksaw for this, you know. It almost works just as well. And I'm now using a belt and disc sander to clean up the ends of the tube and put the camphor on it. But seriously, a simple camphor tool works just as well. And that is actually what I prefer to use at this point. I'm now getting the exact positions for the bends on the tube. And you can see I've actually put the tube into position, but for this I normally use the silicon inserts again. Again, fit them into the exact position I'm going to be routing the tube. This time, measure off the bends, and I usually measure them off one at a time. And I'm now bending the tube. Now, when you heat the tube, signs of overheating is discoloration and bubbles in the acrylic tube. And, you know, it also loses its shape. But you can see just then I hadn't quite heated it enough. And the way you'll know this is as you start to bend the tube, it will kink and lose its shape. And this is something you really need to avoid. You wanna make sure that when you bend the tube, the way you know it's heated enough is it's very easy to bend, but usually it will start to sag on its own. And that's how you'll know it's ready. So I've now made the bend and you need to hold the tube in position, you need to hold the bend until the tube cools down, otherwise it's just going to spring back. And I'm now briefly fitting the tube into position to get the second bend, and you can see how I'm doing this. I'm just marking off where the bend needs to be with my thumb and finger, just roughly. And I've now made the bend, obviously removed the silicon insert, and I'm just trimming down the tube because it turns out it was a little bit too long on one end. And this is something you'll often need to do. Go back, shorten the tube. Often I need to actually redo it again from scratch. Sometimes if the bends are in the wrong places, you can actually heat it up again and straighten the tube out. But you need to be very careful doing this. You know, if you get any kind of
discoloration or any problems when you do that, you will just need to start again. There's now just one more length of tube to be installed to complete the loop in the bottom section of the build. And then I also need to complete the loop in the top section. You can see that I've installed the fittings from the reservoir to the pump and from the pump to the filter. I've also installed the drainage system. And you can see the complexity of the fittings here. When the components are this close together, and there's also the fact that I had to, you know, run the loop through a panel, it's just about impossible to use tubing, and it's really not even worth trying because it just ends up being an absolute mess. You know, if you try to shape the tubing like this in such a tight spot, you end up with the tubing being misshapen, and it just doesn't look right. You're far better off using fittings, but it doesn't mean it's going to be any less challenging. And the difficult part is finding the correct fittings to give you the exact lengths, angles, and bends that you need. I'm now going to assemble the top section of the build with the hard drives, hard drive water blocks, and the 140mm radiator and fan. As I mentioned previously, the hard drives I showed initially weren't actually the final hard drives that are going to be used in this build. So these are the final hard drives, and you can see they are also Western Digital Velocity Raptors, but these ones are very different. Now, I remember when these hard drives were first released, and I wanted them in my build more than anything. I absolutely loved the look of them, and, you know, back then, a Western Digital Velocity Raptor being a 10,000 RPM hard drive, you know, despite the fact that compared to SSDs, it's only a slight amount more performance, was really something that every enthusiast wanted. And... The client actually requested that I open one of these up on camera because, you know, this is a component from 2007. One of them was slightly secondhand, but this one is actually still new. And this is one of those components. It's such a beautiful component. So at this point, it's really started to become almost a collector's item. And it's a very important feature for this build. It's actually the main feature in this build going to be on the top panel in full view and it is the reason for the name of this build typewriter not so much for the aesthetics of the hard drive although that is part of it but mainly for the noise that these hard drives make being a 10,000 rpm drive you know designed for performance maximum performance noise was something that wasn't really considered so they are fairly loud but that is a big part of this build and it's something that you know the client really wanted to go with these hard drives there is going to be another small addition on the top panel and you'll see that later in the build log so i've now skipped ahead i've installed all of the components on the top panel you can see that everything is in position all i need to do now is complete the water cooling loop up here but before i can do that Something that I was working on previously in the build log was the two acrylic inlet outlet pieces on the hard drive water blocks. And as I mentioned, I wanted to change them to brass because I wanted more different metals in this build, you know, as part of the theme. And I mean, the brass and the copper with this paint job just looks amazing. I've used brass elsewhere, but it was also for strength up here because I cut a lot off those pieces initially off the acrylic about seven millimeters and the reason i actually did that was to get the 90 degree fittings down lower so that they fit underneath the top panel but the acrylic ended up too weak so i decided to use brass so we've now finished building these two pieces and initially we did build them by hand and that actually worked out okay but the measurements were slightly off and instead of playing around with them trying to get things right we just decided to start again and get somebody with the necessary tools to to do it and it turns out now we actually have the tools that are needed because i'm in the process of expanding and you know i still have a lot more tools on the way but they're now done and in position and i mean you can see how amazing they look with the awesome color of the the bare copper you know the golden brass 
and the the burned copper paint job now something that was really difficult up here I've actually had to modify a number of the fittings and I'll come back to that I just wanted to say at this point this is when I go back to my old camera so you can see the difference I think that at this point some people are going to you know be be wondering which camera they prefer but with this camera there's no focus problem anyway you can see that I've now completed the water cooling loop up here and the fittings I had to modify were first of all all of the all four of the fittings on the inlets and outlets for the hard drive water blocks I had to shorten the threads by about three millimeters a substantial amount otherwise they wouldn't fit in the brass sections I also had to shorten the extension fitting which is connected to the 140 millimeter radiator because it turns out there was actually no fitting at all that was the correct length to get me the correct height to go between the 140 millimeter radiator and the hard drive water block so it's actually easy to modify fittings you know you just need to take a bit off the thread on either end and you know you can easily shorten them obviously you don't want to take off too much or there's not going to be enough thread left but you know the the difficult part was because I shortened the thread on the female end it meant that I had to shape by hand where the o-ring actually fits into position and you know once I did that I polished it to a mirror finish so that there wouldn't be any problems with the seal but I'm really happy with the way the loop has turned out up here it's just worked out perfectly and because I've used fittings only in that top panel section it just really fits the theme and you can see I've used two of the telescopic extension fittings up there I'm actually going to come back to the fittings later in the build log and go through at least some of the fittings that I've used now at this point I could go ahead and complete the custom wiring and finish the build but I almost always prefer to fill the loop before I complete the custom wiring particularly with small form factor builds because if I were to go ahead and install the custom wiring at this point it would mean that parts of the loop would no longer be accessible and some parts of the loop wouldn't even be visible so it's just a little bit too risky and you know you might as well have the loop filled first so you can see I have everything set up and ready to go to fill the loop paper towels in position the drainage system is hooked up and my external power supply is connected to the pump the client requested that I use aqua computer DP ultra clear coolant in this loop and one liter was sent which I'm not sure if that's going to be enough for this build normally it would be for a small form factor build but because there's so many extra components in this loop you know the hard drive water blocks the filter it may not be enough so just in case I'm going to use Mayhem's X1 clear coolant the main reason I'm using Mayhem's coolant though is because I've used it in just about all of my client builds in recent years and I have builds out there now that have been up and running you know almost 24 7 for over three years with Mayhem's coolant in the loops and they've never had any kind of a problem so it just goes to show how good this coolant is and how long it actually lasts in the loop I'm now switching on the pump obviously it's very loud at this point because the loop is still full of air you may have noticed that this is not the first time I've filled the loop and this is because the pump that the client sent me for this build actually turned out to be faulty so the first time I filled the loop I had to drain it and replace the pump and I've replaced the pump with the Swiftec MCP35X which is a slight upgrade for this build so I'm now filling the loop for the second time and you'll notice that I've only had to fill the reservoir twice before the loop was fully circulating that's because the loop was still half full the first time I filled the loop I had to fill the res six times before the loop was fully circulating and the loop takes around 1.1 liters of coolant most of the time in my builds you'll see me using large reservoirs it completely depends on the build but for me reservoir size is mostly about aesthetics but there is also practical reasons for using a larger reservoir it's going to take less time 
to fill your loop and it's going to be easier. It's also going to take less time for the air to come out of the loop. And the reasons for this is obviously with a larger reservoir, you're not going to need to fill the res and switch the pump on and off as many times before the coolant is fully circulating. And also with a smaller reservoir, for example, in this build, often it ends up that there's a lot of components that are above the reservoir. And this means that all of the air needs to be pushed down from those components into the reservoir, which is obviously the only place that the air can escape and this takes longer. And sometimes if the reservoir is small enough, and this is actually happening in this build, the air ends up you know, recirculating back into the loop over and over. So it just takes a lot longer for all of the air to settle out of the loop. But you know, when it comes down to the aesthetics, you know, in this build, I specifically designed the build as the client requested, and the reservoir suits the theme and it's part of the design what's a few more minutes to fill the loop and you know a little bit longer for the air to come out of the loop it's really no big deal there is a problem that you can occasionally come across though if the reservoir is small enough and low enough in the loop sometimes you can end up with backflow and this is when you switch off the pump as you're filling the loop and the res fills up with coolant and can sometimes even overflow. And this is often something that really takes you by surprise. But this can easily be avoided just with a few small tweaks. For example, in this build I have absolutely no backflow whatsoever. And that's because the coolant comes back into the bottom of the res instead of the top. On one side of the res I have the pump and the filter which are lower than the res. And then on the other side, I have the 240 millimeter radiator which has the inlet and outlet at the top which means the bulk of the volume of the radiator is below the inlet and outlet. Now that I've completed and filled the loop, all that's left to be done is one final internal case mod, the custom wiring and the lighting. So I'm now going back to work on the custom wiring and you can see that I've done a fair bit at this point but there is still a lot to be done and there is a lot of extra custom wiring to be done in this build compared to a normal build of this size because of the Aquero and just all of the extra components. I thought I'd explain again why these sleeving colors were chosen by the client because a lot of people seem to have not understood it. These are the colors that are seen in certain metals when they're heated or corroded and the exposed metals are a very important part the most important part of the theme for this build. The copper, the brass, the stainless steel. The custom paint job on this case is heated or burned copper. And you know, in burned copper, you start to see the violet. The best example I can give for the violet and the green, you know, you see it in stainless steel when it's heated or polished titanium. So the custom cables had to be a part of the theme of this build because there's really no way of hiding a lot of them. Because of the design with all of the components on the top panel, it means I need to run a lot of the wiring straight up the middle of the build and they're all going to be in full view. As you can see, I've already started to run wiring up there. Now this is another custom component that we've built for the slim optical drive. So this is how we're going to mount the slim optical drive to the front panel of the case. And this was built from a combination of 0.6 and 1.5 millimeter 7075 aluminium, which is quite hard to weld considering how thin it is and how lightweight it is. But you can see that this was all welded together and I then ground it back into shape and polished it. And seriously, polishing metals and you know, for me particularly alloy is almost addictive, you know, it's just a whole lot of fun once you start doing it, if you have the right tools, the correct attachments, you know, some good polishing compound, you can just get it to an absolute mirror finish like this. And this is something I'd like to show in a future video, how to polish different metals, because it's a definitely a useful thing to know for modding. So I'm going to mount the optical drive in the next part of the build log.
So that sums up this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and favorite if you want to see more.